In antitrust news this week, on Wednesday, President Biden sent a letter to FTC Chair Lena Kahn encouraging an investigation into oil and gas companies and retail gasoline prices. This is the second time in four months the White House has requested such a study. President Biden claimed that such prices are abnormally high and potentially the result of anti-competitive conduct. Industry groups quickly took issue with the claim. The American Petroleum Institute issued a statement arguing that elevated prices are at least partially the result of ill-advised government policies under Biden. If the FTC follows the president's call for investigation, industry players, particularly refiners and marketers, should expect to receive extensive document and data subpoenas in the coming months. In other antitrust news, the Senate confirmed Jonathan Cantor to lead the DOJ Antitrust Division. Cantor is known to be a strong critic of big tech companies and his confirmation is seen as a win for the progressive push for more aggressive antitrust enforcement. On Wednesday, the Senate held confirmation hearings for Alvaro Bedoya, President Biden's nominee for the empty seat at the Federal Trade Commission. Mr. Bedoya's confirmation is expected to go forward despite some mild opposition from a few Republican senators. On November 15, 2021, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency published proposed new source performance standards and emissions guidelines for methane emissions from new and existing oil and gas sources. The proposed rule is made up of three components affecting sources in the crude oil and natural gas source category. For new, modified, and reconstructed sources, EPA proposed updated and broadened methane and VOC emissions reduction requirements. For existing oil and gas sources, EPA proposed requirements that states develop plans to limit methane emissions, along with nationwide emissions guidelines to assist states in the planning process. The issuance of emissions guidelines would not impose binding requirements directly on sources, but instead provides requirements for states in developing their plans. State plans would be required to be submitted to and approved by EPA pursuant to a public notice and comment process. Key features of these proposed emissions reduction requirements and emissions guidelines include a comprehensive monitoring program for well sites and compressor stations, flexibility to use advanced measurement technology to detect leaks, new requirements for zero emitting pneumatic controllers and intermittent vent pneumatic controllers, standards to eliminate venting of associated gas and require capture and sale of gas where sales line is available at new and existing oil wells, proposed performance standards and presumptive standards for other new and existing sources, including storage tanks, liquids unloading, pneumatic pumps, and compressors, and a requirement that states meaningfully engage with overburdened and underserved communities in developing state plans. EPA also intends to issue a supplemental proposal in 2022 and is requesting information on additional sources of methane for the agency to consider in that rulemaking. EPA will take comment on the proposed rule for 60 days or until January 14, 2022. EPA will also hold virtual public hearings and is hosting virtual training on the proposed rule. The agency plans to issue the final rule by the end of 2022.